There is a wonderful quote that is attributed to Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. In my eyes and in my ears, the organ is the king of instruments. Hundreds of years later, the organ is still king. No other instrument has the same versatility and grandeur of the organ. But over the years, the organ has had its ups and downs. In Mozart's time, the classical era, the organ wasn't as widely used as it had been in the Baroque era. But then in the 19th century, the organ enjoyed a bit of a renaissance, thanks to advancements in organ building technology. And at the beginning of the 20th century, well, organ building was expanding in multiple directions. So the organ was becoming not only the standard instrument of the church and the concert hall, but it also was taking a position of prominence in movie theaters. The king of instruments was also finding its way into people's homes thanks to the development of the electronic organ. Now in the 70s, the electronic organ was hitting new heights. Builders of professional electronic organs were getting ever closer to the authentic feel and sound of a pipe organ. On top of that, there was a plethora of organ builders all concentrating on the home entertainment market. That's right, before cable TV and video games, the centerpiece of most home entertainment systems was an organ. Back then, my hometown of Fresno, California only had about 150,000 people. But there were five music stores that sold home organs. Now, I have another video where I demonstrate one of these instruments and what it was intended to do and all of that good stuff. And I'll leave a link for that in this video's description. Now, the fact that back in the 70s, the organ was completely ubiquitous would be for me, a blessing and a curse. I went to a restaurant in town called Pizza and Pipes, and they had this magnificent Wurlitzer Theater pipe organ, and I decided right then and there I wanted to be an, organ, an organist. My fascination was wrapped up entirely in the sound and the potential that the instrument had. Now, of course, the Pizza and Pipes instrument was a big Wurlitzer theater pipe organ, definitely a professional instrument that would require years of training and much skill to perform music on. But my parents, they couldn't see the difference between that thing and those cheesy home organs they saw advertised on television. So when I told them that I wanted to be an organist, I might as well have told them that I was running away to join the circus. You want to be an organist? What kind of an idiot would want to be an organist? Oh, do you hate your mother? Why would you want to bring such shame on the family? This is how it starts. First you're an organist, and then you'll want to play in a rock band. Your father is right. The organ is only a gateway to ever greater musical depravity. We didn't spend thousands of dollars on your musical education to have you piss it all away. Oh, you know that I've made tremendous sacrifices to afford you a proper musical education. Well, I guess that means nothing. Now, my parents' narrow-minded ignorance could have proven to be a curse for me if it were not for the fact that, well, the 70s were the heyday of the organ. Not only were home organs very popular, but every church had an organ. There were touring organists of every possible discipline giving concerts in every possible genre of music on every conceivable type of organ. This was also the height of Virgil Fox's heavy organ tours. There were hundreds of venues nationwide that featured organ music, everything from nightclubs to pizza parlors. Oh, and by the way, those home organ stores, well, they also sold professional organs. So I would end up having every opportunity in the world to learn to play the organ properly. And there were countless opportunities for employment back then, including rock bands. The organ, like any musical instrument, is only limited by your own imagination. Now through the 70s, the organ was everywhere. It was the standard instrument of the church. Most every home had an organ of some sort. 
and organ concerts were regular well-attended events. Now, well, not so much. Most churches don't have an organ, and those that do seem to be hell-bent on getting rid of them. Now, the interesting thing about this is that for the past 40 years, I've been hearing this same story. Only old people like the organ, so as soon as they're gone, the organ will be gone. I was 16 years old back in 1979, and I had a job at a local church. The organ they had was on its last legs, and I made a pitch for a replacement. The pastor informed me that, well, in just a few short years, all the masses will be guitar masses, so there's no need to replace the organ. Well, it wasn't that many more years later before they were forced to replace the organ, and that replacement organ is still in use at their new church. And let's fast forward to today, 40 years later, uh, one of the churches I currently play at has an organ that's on its last legs and I've made a pitch to replace it. And the music director informed me, oh, no, 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 in a few more years, all the, ma all the services will be praise band services, so there's no need to replace the organ. Well, I have a question. Do traditional services die out as the old people who attend them die out? Or is it that people are growing into them? Uh, let's face it, the older folks that attended the organ mass 40 years ago, well, they're probably gone by now. But the organ mass remains and is still attended by, you guessed it, older people. It's clear to me that it's not really the desire of the congregation that is driving this shedding of organs. There's other factors at play here, and, well, they're too numerous to mention in this video, and so maybe we'll make this a series. The organ is still the king of instruments, and if churches do successfully get rid of all their organs, well, the organ will find a new home and it will continue to make music at the hands of creative people. With all of the versatility and grandeur that only the organ can offer, imaginative musicians will continue to find new ways to make music on the king of instruments. So if you've enjoyed this video and would like to help me keep doing it, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also connect with me on Facebook at Tony I, the Organ Guy, and for just $2 a month, you can support me on Patreon and get access to exclusive content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.